Today we'll use the mold tools inside SOLIDWORKS in order to create the tooling for this fan. Um, actually I did that so you can see in the end how it's gonna look like. There you go. Bottom and, and top. Let's see how this is being done because it's not as easy as it looks like. The first thing you might consider doing is calculating the parting line. By the way, the designer told us that he's not concerned with applying draft on the cylindrical surface. He's going to print this, uh, creating a 3D print, and use that for uh, the sand pattern. So apparently, he, he's not concerned with draft. The pull direction, let's say it's going to be this face, de uh, defined by this face. Let's run the draft analysis and split the faces exactly at the plus minus draft transition. And as you can see, most of the faces can be split. All the blades are good. But here you have to do quite a lot of work. And you have to work eight times in order to split the cylindrical face. You're going to have to do some, uh, some extra work. And instead of doing it, what I did, I just cut this part in order to get one eighth of it. Uh, the part itself, it's centrisymmetrical, as you can see, circular symmetry. So I'm just using 45 degrees in order to get one eighth of it. Uh, as you can see also, I'm using a closed sketch. You don't really need to do that in order to slice the part, but I'm going to use this sketch also later on for my uh, tooling split. So now when you go to the parting line, again I'm going to use this as my direction, and draft analysis, split faces at plus minus draft transition, everything seems seems fine, so it's kind of easy to to select this part. Oops, let's go undo. It went one step too much. So I'm just going to use yes and no, you know, Y and N, in order to specify the direction. And in this direction, I'm going to come from here. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see where we're we going. Yes, and yes. So there you go. That's my uh, parting line. Since I already created, I'm just going to delete this one that I just did it and let's show the one that I created. Now obviously we need to split this face in order to get a nice transition between these two edges so the easiest way to do that is select the face and run this spline on surface command that allows you to create actually a 3D sketch with a spline between those two ends that's actually following the cylindrical surface so it's completely on this surface and use that in order to create a split line. So it's going to cut this face in two. And you can see it here, actually, this is what I did. Let me hide the original parting line, because I want to create another one uh, based on these edges. So uh, let's try that. The second parting line is going to be based on, on the same face for the pull direction. And uh, draft analysis of one degree. You can see the green faces. So, yes, 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 in this direction. And let's say I'm going to continue like this. Yes, 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 and yes. And I have my parting line. If I click OK, it's going to get created. I can use this for my parting surface. The problem I have, let's put here a big uh, value, about 100. I don't care about smoothing at this time. I'm getting this crazy bulge in this area. And that is because of, um, of the shape of this uh, split line here. So I'm going to take a, the liberty of uh, deleting this parting surface, uh, sorry, parting line that I created. And you know what? I am just going to delete this face using delete and patch. So that's exactly what I did. I selected the face with delete and patch, and the other face pretty much untrimmed itself, and uh, I got a nicer result. I use again a uh, spline on surface in order to split this face into now, now uh, nicely. So select the face and run the spline on surface. Now the parting line, let me, uh, let me make it visible. It's, it's nicer. Uh, you're going to have here a little bit of a problem on the draft. Again, my, my uh, customer told me that's OK. So uh, let's uh, use that parting line in order to create the parting surface. So the same parting line that I, I created before. I use it for creating a parting surface, so let's say about 100 millimeters. Next thing, I created a plane right here in the middle of the part. That's uh, since the part wasn't really uh, symmetrical on the origin, or wasn't created on the origin, I selected the two faces with the 
meet plane option in order to create a plane right in the middle. And from that plane, I used the original sketch, if you remember the sketch that I uh, used to cut my uh, part in order to extrude it in uh, with a mid plane option, let's say about a hundred millimeter. So that's going to be the base for my, my tooling. Now I would like to remove the body of the original part. So you know when you do uh, uh, combine subtract that body is going to get consumed. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a copy of the original body in place with zero translation, zero rotation. So uh, as you can see, I'm going to have here in the solid bodies, two bodies, one on top of each other. This is one, this is the other one. And I'm going to use the copy to be subtracted from using the combine subtract. I'm going to remove from the big body the copy of the fan, of the slice of the fan. So now if I'm isolating this guy, you can see how it how it's going to look like. Now the thing is I need to cut it in two. So uh, unfortunately I cannot use uh, my parting surface right away because there are some issues here being right at the edge. So I'm just going to extend this parting surface just a tiny bit. If you, I pretty much selected all these edges of the parting surface and I extrude them just with one millimeter. And that's enough to use the split command in order to split my body in into pieces. So I'm just going to use this. I'm going to delete the surface body. I don't need it anymore. I don't like to leave things that are not really needed. And I'm doing a circular pattern with uh, it's a body based circular pattern for all those three bodies, the top and the bottom and the um, engineer, engineer part. And after that with three combines, one for the top, one for the bottom and one to recreate the engineer part. This is what you have. You know in SOLIDWORKS 2012 you can create an exploded view if you want to. So let's edit this explode. Apparently um, I did some changes to it so it doesn't doesn't work at this time. I'll tell you what I did. I wanted to to use the move bo body command in order to be able to see both sides at the same time, both uh, in internal uh, faces at the same time. But if I wouldn't have this, let me just delete them. My exploded view should have worked quite nicely, as you can see, similar to, to assemblies. Remember one thing, if you are in exploded view, you don't have access to modifying anything here, so you have to collapse it before doing any change to your part. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Thank you to Peter Parker uh, for his question on SOLIDWORKS forums.